This is an oral history interview with Richie Campbell, a seasoned member of the West's Premier League men's water polo team. The interviewer is myself, Mark Sabolch, and the interview took place in April 2019. G'day Richie, thank you for joining us today. No Appreciate problem. your time. So tell us about um, how you first started at Ashfield water polo team. The way it all came about and the way I started uh, playing at Ashfield Pool was back in early 2000s, the West Magpies team actually did a trip up to Newcastle, where I'm from. Uh, they had a training camp for a weekend, and in a way it was a training camp and recruiting, you know, future players. So um, that weekend they targeted 10 of us athletes that were just kids in Newcastle, and they said, you know, come up to Sydney and trial for our team. Um and then it, that's just how it started for me and my older brother at the time. So that was the 2000 season and then 2001 is where I probably started playing because I was only 12, 13 years old. Um, in the under-14s competition, we'd play on a Wednesday night at Ashfield Pool and then come down and play men's grade on Saturdays as well. Okay, so since 2001, you've been yeah. playing in the Ashfield Pool. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So what was uh, the West's club like at that time? At that time, it was a it was a younger sort of amateur club. It had um, been around. It was one of the original um, water polo clubs in Sydney, and through the nineties, it was very strong. But in the late nineties, just before two thousand Olympics, they saw a massive drop off in their elder players. Um, just that's the way. It, happens and they go through a cycle phase and so that was when they said you know we need to go and find some new recruits some new players from certain areas and um, they were still getting an influx of kids in the local area but um, there was a untapped resources they call it up in Newcastle where there's a bunch of players playing in the local competition but not getting that um, sort of metro experience that the better quality um, players were here so just I remember that that camp or that you know recruiting trip that vividly because it was just like a it was a a really good bunch of guys that just made you feel welcome and the team was just it was just like one big family and that's what's always attracted me to the to the to Ashfield and um, the club mm. is because, and I'm still you know here today because of that family and um, sort of brotherhood environment. Mm-hmm. So what was your first team like? I think you mentioned you played the under-14s. Yeah. What was that team like then? Oh, back then, and it's and it's really funny because some of those guys are still playing with me now. And, um, yeah, back then, you know, we were just all young. We didn't really know it, each other. And, you know, I was kind of just thrown into um, the mix with a bunch of Sydney kids, and it just seemed to work out. I don't know. Back then, too, we just had the... The elder, the senior players that were around, um, the coaching staff were just so well respected that everyone kind of just followed that sort mm. of lead. Mm. Okay. And, yeah, and you know, because I look at my relationship now with my players and the friends that I've grown up with playing at uh, West, and it's pretty much identical or mimicked to that um, the guys that went through in the nineties. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm. So it was kind of like in our club culture, to everyone was really good mates and they grew up together, even though you might, you know, I was from Newcastle at the time and I was growing up with kids in Sydney and, you know, we'd, I'd stay over at kids' house in Sydney to, um, you know, train of a weekend and stuff and we just all became one big sort of family and that's the way the club's always been, so... Mm. Yeah, even the kid. I look at the kids these days that are coming through. You know, they some of them won't have Ashfield for the next couple of years, but they're the same. Like they were all hanging out together. It's like they'd rather hang out with their their West buddies than the kids they go to school with. So mm. yeah, mm. I don't know. It's just we seem to have, we got it right for mm. a time. So mm. hopefully it sticks like that. Yeah, yeah, you know. So. Thinking back to your early days in, in Ash, playing at Ashfield Pool again, yeah. can you describe some of your memories of being at Ashfield Pool? Yeah, I can because a lot, 
while Ashfield's getting redone now, a lot didn't change over that, you know, 20 year period I was there. Grandstands for me are just the thing that stands out because they have not changed the whole time and like I was always sitting on them and um, you just remember walking in and seeing them and you always thought, you know, that was a bit run down and 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 that, but it was just like that was our, that was our home, you know? Mm. So we just, we loved it mm. the way it was, you know? Like it's, don't get me wrong, it's going to be fantastic when it's, you know, done, but it was just amazing seeing, walking in, you know, seeing those grandstands on both sides um, and then going towards the water polo pool and you always saw the basketball court on the right there and the drain, the drain was always there. We lost thousands of balls in the drain, you know, the sewer, the sewer drains. You know, the exterior was a bit, bit rough, but yeah. underneath it was good quality. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I don't know. It's just how I saw it. Yes. And uh, I know you focused on water polo. Did you mix or or, or um, interact with the other social community groups using the pool? The swim team a little bit, but uh, yeah, not not so much. So we we were always coming in at times where it was mainly just us using the pool. Um, you know, we were there training most nights. You know, and by that stage the locals had all cleared out or they were walking out as we were walking in um, because we didn't start till we were going seven till nine o'clock most nights. What was your training regime like? Um, Well then when so when we first when I moved to Sydney it was pretty pretty hectic because we had uh, I don't know if you know or have heard of Erkin Shigeyev at the time he's an Olympic gold medalist he was our coach so he he came in um, as our head coach of the club and kind of, you know, shook it up and made it to what it is today, like, you know, as the successful club today. Um, and he was very, very strict on our um, schedule. So we were, you know, training every night and even mornings, um, sometimes before games um, at Ashfield, so, and even Sunday mornings after games. So... But we were doing three-hour sessions and sometimes we'd go to 10, 10 o'clock at night just because he was very strict in the way he wanted things. And at the time, our team was very young. So as I said like before, a lot of um, older guys had retired and we had this fresh bunch of kids that were very talented and but ranging from maybe 17 to 21. And so Erkin had us for three years, like that core group together and what we achieved in that time like we didn't win any leagues but we were so young that we'd gone from the season before losing by 15 goals to uh, making finals in our first year so um, and what team was that 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 was the m1 M1 national league team okay good so the club kind of said you know we've had this generational shift okay so we've got now all these young guys 18 to 21 and hopefully they're our players for the next 10 years, mm. you know, and mm. it ha- pretty much has been. So mm. they just um, implemented a good program and then all of a sudden we had, um, you know, guys like myself and then there was three of, three others that the next year after that made Australian teams, um, Australian squads. So Erkin just kind of developed us into the players that we were and, um, in 2008, we the, we won the club's first National League title. So that was just after two years of him being there. And then Erkin, we, I think he, we, the club parted ways with Erkin because he ended up getting a job. He went and coached Russia for then their national team. So, mm. um, and he took them to um, World Championships and Olympic Games and stuff. So, yeah, so... Was he the most inspiring coach you've had? Oh, I've had a f- yeah, I've had a few, but like he just I don't know, if you ever get to meet this guy, he's just um, he's a next level coach. Like he's just mm. really switched on with what he does, and um, just the most drilled coach I've ever had. Mm. Like he would really test you. Yeah, you know, test you mentally, physically. Um, and I think that's why, you know, our team was so successful because we just banded together and it wasn't like us versus him, but he just put, 
put us through something that we've never experienced and we came out the other end for the better of it. Mm. Um, you know, even to the day, you know, we can speak speak, speak about the pool and our experiences at the pool and we, Erkin was just the type of guy that drilled us so hard and yeah. we just, I don't know, he drilled us so hard to the day one day he actually um, were at the pool and he was coaching us and he, he had a heart attack right in front of us. Really? <laughs> yeah, at the pool, at Ashfield Gee, Pool. That's... In, in 2007, I think. And he's mm. the world's toughest man and mm. he just copped it and laid down on the pool. And like, he didn't say anything to us, he just said, guys, training's finished. And then just lay down on the side of the pool and, and we were just like, no, nah, something's not right. And then yes. our assistant coach manager went and saw him and he's just like, call an ambulance for me <laughs> right yeah and then it yeah so. okay so it was okay obviously yeah it was okay but um gee that's serious three days four days later or if he spent four days in the hospital and then mm. back at training on pool deck the next week just yeah how, how did that leave the team oh uh, just in shock really we were just like you know because we always knew that he he just he works as hard as we do like he pushes yeah. himself and yeah to push us and then yes. yeah we were just like oh you know it's just now it's just uh, we think back on that day and it's just like a mutual respect thing now like what yeah. we put ourselves through and mm. you know if I'll talk to him now and you know it's just different like he does he treated you like a child back then mm. even though you're an adult he said he said to me before you know pre um, he's like now you understand and I was like what are you talking about Erkin because he's, like, he's got his Russian accent he's like mm. now you understand and I was like what do you mean he's like D- you understand now like why I pushed you so hard and w- I did yes. what I did <laughs> yes and I was like I do you know yes you do because yeah. I think it, we're at a world championships and I just finished playing a game and he was there watching and he came over to me and said you know good game and you yeah. know now you understand <laughs> and I was like okay <laughs> He so just... tell me now about uh, the National League. So you were a young team, you were trained hard and you tra- and you achieved some success. Tell me about that success. So yeah, to win our first title in 2008 was a huge achievement for the club. It was just it just showed what the club had actually done through mm. and it, it, the club was successful in the 90s but had multiple second places. Mm. So they'd make a final and and always lose, so we could they could never win. Mm. Um, and then that season when Erkin came in 2006, 7, 8, and they changed it, turned it around, and we won our first. It just set the limit for you know, the, or lim- limitless opportunities for everyone. And all these local, all these kids from the area just wanted to play with us because we, you know, we were the champions, but we also had a really good program mm. and a really good bunch of guys around us and everyone just kind of heard about you know mm. what we do at the club and they wanted us to play um and that led on to like a, a few of us went away for a couple of years so like i've uh like i went and played with the team in spain for two years i went and played in barcelona sorry for three years i was there so that was after you won the national league yeah so in the 2000 like after the 2008 season i went 9 10 11 mm. um in Barcelona, so that just created, opened the doors, like, mm. to go and play professionally in Europe. Professionally? Uh, yeah, mm. so I did that for three years, but then I came back in 2011, or end of 2011, 2012 season. Um, we finally got our original team back together, that, that um, like, 2006, 7, 8 team mm. in 2014, mm. and we ended up winning the title again. Mm. And so, and we were just, it was probably the best one we've won because we've gone from, you know, winning in 2008 and we had some time apart Mm. and a lot of guys went and did different things. Like, you know, I went, like some guys went off and played the Olympics, others got into the work grind and didn't really train that much anymore, but they were still playing. Mm. But then 2014, we just said, no, we're getting the team together, we're Mm. playing, you know, we ended up winning, Mm. had a really good season, we won. Um, and then we turned it around the next season after and we did it again. Mm. So it's not common for teams to go back to back mm. and win. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we kept that team together, we won back to back and then we were just like, amazing. Um, and then a lot of, a few of the older guys 
um, retired. So we had a, you know, a bit of a disappointing run the year after that. But then we got on the horse again and um, won again in 2017. And so that was, you know, three titles out of four years. Mm-hmm. Um, and then last year, or the year before last year, we, you know, didn't have a good season. We ended up bowing out in the finals again. But at least we still made the finals. And um, and then this year we're, we're currently first, so we're looking good this year. So mm. I think it just... Um, I think it just shows that for the past say ten years, ten eleven years, the club has been the most one of the well, the most successful club in in, in the national league, um, and that's just come off the back of say fifteen kids that the club got to play for um, back in you know early two thousands that have just stayed together for the whole time period. Clearly, you love water polo. Yeah. I, I do love the sport. It is a really good sport. Like, and um, I love the game. I love the competitiveness of it. Um, it's starting to take its toll on me, though. Like, it's wearing. Like, I've been playing for so long that mm. you know um, I'm training for Tokyo 2020, and um, I think that'll be my last sort of games or Olympic games, but also water polo games. Mm. Why has West been so successful? Uh, you've spoken about the camaraderie and the brotherhood, but uh, but is it what what is it about West that that keeps West going so well? Um, it's just the club itself is a whole community, and like we have multiple. Um, what have we got? Two hundred and oh, I don't know, two hundred, three hundred juniors or whatever that just want to come and play for us. They we call it bleeding, bleeding black and white. So the magpies, the West magpies, because um, everyone just wants to be a part of us and be who we are. Because um, they see our team and how like we're successful, but at the same time we're successful, you know, in and out of the water, and that's what people what attracts people to mm. to the club. Mm. Um, and this, as I said before, the support network that we've got, um, you know, we're helping kids along the way. Um, you know, kids have come down from Queensland just to be a part of what we've got and, you know, families have moved because they've heard of how supportive we are, you know, for the sport mm. and for the kids that want to play. Like, we put it all back into the the younger generations. Mm. So, mm. and that's what's kept me at the same club for all this time, you know. Like, I would never play for anyone else. Mm. Like, yeah, I took um, a contract over in Europe, but that's kind of what... What, what people do, um, you know, when they're playing in the national team and stuff, but there's no way I'd play for any other club in Australia. And, like, I've had the offers to go and play, you know, yeah. for for a lot more money, you know, <laughs> than Wes would ever throw at me. But Wes have... Wes offer me a lot more than just money. Yes. Like, I'm not... It's not about money for me. It's about yes. feeling comfortable and being in that environment that you love. Mm. Otherwise, why do you play the sport? Yeah, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And how long do you see yourself playing for Wes? Um, yeah, it's a tough one. Because, uh, well, with 2020 Olympics around the corner, um, I don't know, maybe next year's my last year. So we've got this season coming up. Maybe it's one more season after that. But if I'm not playing for the club, um, I'll definitely be involved somewhere. Mm. like whether it's coaching or like I'll be around forever mm. at the club because the club's given me so much and given me yeah. the opportunity um, I'll always be a member of the club and I'll always mm. be here to support it so mm-hmm. should Ashfield continue with a water polo pool 100% mm. <laughs> I think you've got to understand what that pool actually does for people you know like i'm just one example but i can give you you know every kid that's come through that door um i can use them as an example because they get they gain so much they gain life skills you know friends um friends and club benefits the club club that's there that's going to teach them uh you know goal setting life goals um Mm. 
you know, the family environment that, you know, kids could probably get, you know, or kids don't get at a, a park, for example, that they get at this, this, this Asheville pool mm. that has just been around since, you know, forever. Mm. Um, it needs the water polo pool. Like it's, I don't know, for me it was life there. Mm. You know, I lived and breathed it for so long and, you know, so many other kids have and mm. the success that's come from our club is due to having that pool there. Like mm. we were the ones that used it every day in, day out, you know, whether we were the kids or um, the M1 team, um, we were putting hundreds of kids through there a week mm. and you take that away, then there's a hundred less kids that may not, you know, get a chance to go onto the play Olympic Games, travel mm. travel Europe playing water polo or, mm. you know, win championships or, you know, get to that level where the club, well, the club looks after everyone, but, you know, like as they get older, you know, they might need guidance mm. as to where to go down, what path to go down in life. And, you know, if there's no, if there's no pool there for us, like no water polo pool, there's no club really. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's why we need it. Like, it's just... Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've been to some... You've performed in some Olympics in the past. Yep. What was it like? What was it like to be in that Olympic team? Oh, pretty crazy, actually. Um, Well, back in 2008 was my first, and one, I thought I'd never... You know, a kid coming from Newcastle to play at Asheville Pool in 2001, I didn't think I'd... In 2008, I'd be you know, playing in Olympic Games um, in front of thousands of people. Um, so that was just crazy and, you know, and then kind of set the tone, whereas this is what I, I know what I want to do. Um, and then, I, of course, I went on to um, London and uh, Rio Olympics in 2012 and 2016 mm-hmm. and just fantastic experience, both of them. Um, unfortunately, the teams were very unlucky we were unlucky, you know, all three, all three times and losing quarterfinal games. Mm. So I never got to that medal round, um, but hopefully mm. Tokyo, we've got a solid team at the moment. Um, and last year we finished second in the World Cup. So how many Wests players are in at the, the team? At the moment, there's myself, Joel Denley, who's been there for... Oh, he was there in my under-16s team. He's a kid from Parramatta or Chester Hill. Um, he's our goalkeeper in the national team at the moment. So him, myself, Jared Gilchrist, who moved up from Melbourne in 2013, 14 season. So he's been a magpie for quite some time now. And, uh, Lockie Hollis, local Concord boy. Mm -hmm. Um, he's been in our club too for a while. Um, and then we've got a couple of our juniors who aren't in the Olympic sort of team as such but they're in the squad they're up next up and comings so okay but you, you kind of train together do you yeah so we all train together mm. um mm. as a club mm. but then we also train together as a national team okay yeah mm. so but then there we there's so there, i think there's seven or eight of us mm. that are in the australian squad at the moment mm. that play for west in right. the, in national league um but then there's the squads of six, 16 17 at the moment. Mm. So there's eight of us from West out of 17. It's almost half the team. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. incredible. But um, as I said, it, the, the guys that I'm playing with now in the national team, we've been mm. playing together at West, at Asheville for so long. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Like there might be better players, like natural ability sort of players. Um, and their attributes are probably maybe better, but I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's because we play so well together that they get selected in the team as well. So right. does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So <clears throat> something about the chemistry between you. Yeah, right? the chemistry in the water, and when we play for West, sort of the, the national team selectors see that, and they would rather that than mm. a kid who I don't know. He might show all the ability in the world, but he put puts us in with he gets in with us, and he's not. Mm. he's not there so yeah, yeah. so I think so I think that helps yeah mm. well Richie thank you for your time no, no worries it's it's really interesting to hear your story but um, 
Um, it's fantastic that you've achieved so much, and you know, like congratulations on you know the, your your uh, you know your work with the national team and the national league, and and good luck for the 2020 Olympics. Ah, oh, thanks very much. It was good good to re- revisit all these sort of memories. They're all they're all good memories. So it was good. Mm. Thanks very much.